Hi folks, I'm Morris Donovan from All Autos Events Jenny here in Brisbane. I just had my nice cup of tea and I, I'm just sitting back um, ready to present to you guys a segment out of a video series I've just been completing. Uh, the series is on um, serial data network bus systems and I've taken this little section that you're going to see now out of this um, larger section that you can visit and have a look at later but this section's on um, the protocol high speed CAN um, and the protocol will go through the um, different voltages and, and how it all works so just join us as we um, take a journey together thank you now this 5 volts and 7 volts or whatever voltage re is required for the bus to toggle it takes on different levels and dimensions between different protocols. So let's look at the high CAN protocol. It toggles from 2.5 volts with the CAN high line going up to 3.5 volts and the CAN low line going from 2.5 volts down to 1.5 volts. So what's going on here? Originally I was not going to go into this until the next video but a good friend and colleague of mine recommended I should expand on this as different protocols can use different rules. It is important to know the system. Now, first and foremost, I do not want anyone being confused when we are talking about high CAN line, that being the line that goes 3.5 volts, and the low CAN line, that being the line that gets pulled down to 1.5 volts. We are simply talking about one line having a higher voltage and one line having a lower voltage. Even though this protocol we are now discussing is actually high speed CAN protocol, when we are talking about high and low CAN lines, we are not talking about two different protocols such as high speed CAN protocol and low speed CAN protocol. I know many people have been confused thinking these lines run two different protocols, but it is not the case. As high speed CAN has a high CAN line and a low CAN line, the two lines are part and parcel of the one and the same protocol. Why does CAN use two twisted wires of the same length and why the different voltages? Well, let's start with the twisted wires. The wires are twisted to cancel out EMI, electromagnetic interference. Due to many circuits such as the ignition coils, the injectors, where high levels of electromagnetic radiation is present, this electromagnetic noise will be introduced into both the twisted wires. But due to the twisted wires being an equal balanced pair, the noise is cancelled out by the balanced pair. In other words, since the noise is equal in both twisted pair of wires, means being equal there is no difference. The fact that each circuit receives the same noise level, the different circuits cancel the effect that the noise has on them. Now getting back to the CAN protocol voltage, we have two wires on the protocol for another reason other than EMI, electromagnetic interference, and that is to increase fault tolerances. What happens if we have an open circuit or a faulty module? The CAN can operate on just one line if necessary. I'll explain more as we go on, but for now, I just want to explain a little more why we have two wires and centre on concentrating more on the two different voltages that we see on these two lines. If I was to tell you that the protocol uses 2.5 as a 5 volt recessive command and that the protocol only looks at the different voltages between the high CAN line and the low CAN line, being 2 volts, as a dominant 0 volt. I have confused you. I suspect I have. So, do not turn off just yet, because I will go over and I will make sure you understand this. Now, think about this. We have 5 volts, which is divided between two lines. And the idle, or as we know it in um, bus language, the recessive, meaning there is no communication happening, the two lines are equal, both sharing 2.5 volts each, which adds up to actually 5 volts. That is fairly straightforward stuff and no different to the earlier model of the 5 volt recessive command except that now we have two wires sharing the 5 volt recessive command. Now the complicated part, but it really isn't that complicated when you understand the reason I said initially the bus system, the CAN protocol, only looks at the different voltages of the two lines. So if CAN is in recessive command, both lines share 2.5 volts and there is no difference of the voltage. Now let's imagine we use equal voltage for both lines to move to a dominant command. Let's say 5 volts. So both lines go to 5 volts. What is the difference on the voltage line? The answer is zero. 
But if we differ the voltage as it is in the case of CAN, we see the high CAN pull to 3.5 volts and the low CAN line pulls to 1.5 volts. Now we have a 2 volt difference. So instead of toggling between 0 volts and 5 volts, we simply toggle between no voltage difference as being an idle recessive command, difference in voltage as a dominant command. It is that simple, on and off, no different in voltage, voltage difference. It is on, off, dot, dashes, voltage difference, no voltage difference. It is that simple. Are you still wondering, but why do this? It is all about fault tolerances. If one line goes down, the other keeps working, and we continue to have no voltage difference to having a voltage difference. On, off, it is still a binary message. Looking at this simple 12 volt light circuit, we have a simple toggling of the two CAN line communication voltage differences to turn, the re turn on the transistor. We do not require a high voltage to turn on a transistor. Normal voltage difference between high CAN low and CAN high is 2 volts. And this is high enough voltage for the transi transistor to turn on and for the bulb then to return to earth and light up. Let's just say we had a CAN line down, as is in the example we have here, where we now only have one volt difference between the two can lines, but it's still enough voltage to turn the transistor on. So this is another reason high can protocol uses two wires. It helps with fault tolerances, meaning the can system can still operate with just one line working. So in reality, the can high speed protocol is still using the same binary language that we've been talking about. But it is a protocol that makes the rules, and it is the rules that govern the methods of the voltages, including the physical layer and the wiring that joins the modules.